Welcome everyone to the RSNA Radiographics Podcast. My name is Evelyn Carroll from Mayo Clinic in NYU Langone, and I'm joined today by Vaz Zavaleta from Children's Hospital Colorado and the University of Colorado. Today we will be discussing our recent radiographics article titled Imaging Care for Transgender and Gender Diverse Patients best practices and recommendations by the following authors, Dr. Krista Karazas, Dr. Erica Stein, myself, Dr. Hallie Christman, Dr. Daniel Kirkpatrick, Dr. Ashish Wozniak, Dr. Vaz Zavaleta, who's joining me today, and Dr. Katherine Materin. So our time is limited. And we are going to jump right in with Dr. Zavaleta, first discussing the importance of appropriate and inclusive language for our trans patients and colleagues. All right, thank you, Evelyn. So the first section, review of appropriate language in our article, you know, transgender diverse patients experience disparities specific to radiology. And it is the physician and staff ignorance about transgender gender diverse health that is the major barrier to effective care, and this unfairly transfers responsibility to the patient. Radiologists are an integral part of the medical team and share a responsibility for patient experiences and outcomes. So when caring for our transgender gender diverse people, it's important to use proper terminology. Transgender gender diverse people have a gender identity that is discordant with their assigned sex at birth. I would like to briefly and quickly review key terms. However, I refer you to table one, um, and our associated references from our article for a more detailed review of appropriate terminology and language. So first, transgender women are assigned male at birth and identify as women. Transgender men were assigned female at birth and identify as men. Some gender diverse individuals may not conform to a traditional binary gender construct and may describe their gender identity as non-binary, gender queer, gender fluid, or agender, among many others. It's important to respect how the patient identifies their gender. In addition to gender identity, we have patient's chosen name and patient's chosen pronouns. Chosen name and chosen pronouns should always be used. Some transgender gender diverse people may not be able to legally change their name because of personal or legal barriers. Thus, it's important to ask patients how they would like to be called. Honorifics such as Mr. and Mrs. Smith should be avoided unless otherwise stated by the patient. Sexual orientation and gender identity are distinct entities, and one should not make assumptions about a person's sexual orientation on the basis of their gender identity. So again, very brief, very quick overview. Please see table one in our article and the associated references for more details. On to you, Evelyn. Great, thank you so much, Baz, for that wonderful summary. So our article was structured based on the imaging journey a patient takes through the radiology department. Um, before, during, and after the imaging exam. And it highlights the potential pearls and pitfalls at each stage of this imaging journey for our transgender and gender diverse patients as they navigate the imaging suite. At each stage, we will share a patient vignette to highlight a common pitfall. And at the very end, we will also briefly discuss how to make the radiology department more inclusive for our transgender and gender diverse radiology colleagues, trainees, and allied health staff. So Dr. Zavaleta will begin by discussing the experience of our trans patients prior to their arrival to the radiology department. So first vignette, a 42 year old transgender man referred for screening mammography before chest masculinization surgery has a 10 year history of taking masculinizing gender affirming hormone therapy and a family history of breast cancer. Scheduling is confusing and awkward. He receives a pink informational guide all about breasts, and he is directed to the women's imaging department for his appointment. In this section, we talk about the electronic health records, ordering and scheduling, pre-authorization, and patient instructions. In 2015, the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the Office of National Coordinator for Health Information Technology announced that electronic health records should have the ability to collect sexual orientation and gender identity data. Accurate sexual orientation and gender identity data not only helps the patient in their health system navigation and experience, but robust data also can be used to help address health disparities. What do I mean by robust? Well, all major vendors have the capacity to collect and store 
sexual orientation, gender identity data, but not all health systems have this feature activated and not all health systems have trained personnel on how to collect and use this data. The workflow of ordering and scheduling exams varies among health systems. Ordering physicians may communicate directly with the radiology call center or scheduling team, or patients may call to schedule appointments. In either case, radiology scheduling staff should be trained to ask patients what their chosen name and chosen pronouns are and update it in the electronic health record. Pre-authorization is a challenge as well. Insurance is slowly improving for transgender and gender diverse patients. However, 10% of transgender gender diverse patients still experience exclusions in coverage. Pre-authorization from insurance payers is usually not required for a mammography or ultrasound, but may be needed for advanced imaging such as CT, MRI, and PET-CT. For example, there may be an insurance issue when a transgender woman who qualifies for screening breast MRI may be denied coverage if her legal sex is listed as male. It's important and incumbent upon our physicians and radiology departments to understand this and to be able to help our patients navigate this so that they don't incur unnecessary costs for routine screening exams and or transition-related imaging care. All right, on to you, Dr. Carroll, for day of the exam. Thank you so much. So in this section, I'll be discussing the arrival to the radiology department, checking in with the clerical staff, uh, addressing dressing rooms and restrooms, and then also talking about trauma-informed care. And I'm gonna start with our second vignette. A 29-year-old transgender woman taking feminizing hormonal therapy for three years is referred for an outpatient ultrasound exam. She has not yet legally changed her name, and despite filling out her chosen name and gender on the registration form, she is called from the rating room by her legal name. She's very embarrassed by this and considers leaving the radiology department foregoing the ultrasound exam. So first impressions um, of the radiology suite are very important. And an inclusive environment signals that the department is welcoming and safe for our transgender and gender diverse patients. It may alleviate patient anxiety. Departments should display affirmative and supportive symbols, such as the uh, transgender equality or rainbow pride flags. Diversity affirming reading materials should be available. Uh, and there also should be a visible non-discrimination policy available as well. Staff can also wear pronoun pins or stickers to signal that they are a safe person for our trans patients. Ideally, the patient's chosen name and gender identity are available in the electronic health record at the time of patient registration. Staff should be trained to discreetly confirm this information to avoid misgendering or outing patients. As with the patient in our second vignette, uh, this can be a source of severe distress or invalidation of their identity. Patients should always be greeted or announced by their chosen name if it is listed in the electronic healthcare record. If the chosen name is not known, staff should call patients by their last name and then use their date of birth for verification. Additional intake forms should be completed privately to protect patient confidentiality. And then a two-step approach is recommended when asking about a patient's gender identity first and then their sex assigned at birth second. Moving on to dressing rooms and restrooms. Um, so dressing rooms are often labeled with gender-specific terms or symbols for male or female, men and women, which is a potential source of patient anxiety. Single-user, gender-neutral dressing rooms are the best practice. And if a binary structure must be maintained due to um, building design or structural purposes, ask patients which dressing room they prefer, which aligns with their gender identity, and ensure that a single user option is also available. There should also be gender neutral waiting rooms for gown patients awaiting their imaging studies. And then single user, all gender restrooms with clear labels should also be available throughout the facility. And then lastly, trauma-informed care. Transgender and gender diverse people are more likely to have experienced trauma compared with the general population. Trauma-informed care is an approach that enables providers to serve trauma survivors better and improve health outcomes. Providers should use universal trauma precautions, including patient-centered communication, provision of a safe environment, and protection of patient privacy, especially during sensitive exams, such as mammography, ultrasound, and imaging guided procedures. All right, I will hand it over to Vaz for our next section. 
Thank you so much. So during the radiology okay. exam, I'd like to start with a vignette. An 18 year old non-binary patient, they them pronouns assigned female at birth is referred for pelvic ultrasound. The patient is initially misgendered by the sonographer. After the patient points out that they have been misgendered, the sonographer offers a lengthy apology and explanation. The patient feels guilty and remains uncomfortable. During the transvaginal portion of the pelvic ultrasound, the patient becomes severely anxious about exposure to the invasive ultrasound probe and the way to which their genitals are referred. All right, so first in this section, respectful imaging acquisition. The process of image acquisition provides several opportunities to improve inclusivity. When obtaining the patient's clinical history, the provider should avoid questions about the patient's genitalia, surgical status, or current point in transition if they are not directly related to the examination. However, if they are, it's important to respectfully ask our patients about their anatomy and explain the basis for this question. It's our job as providers to understand the patient's anatomy and understand how it is integral to the exam study. In addition, radiologists and staff should be aware of modality-specific considerations for image acquisition. I refer you to Table 3, which details modality, indications specific to gender-affirming care, and patient-centered changes in techniques. For ultrasound, radiologists and sonographers should be aware that nearly 50% of transgender gender-diverse patients report emotional discomfort, particularly with transvaginal testicular and breast or chest ultrasound. This highlights the necessity of a trauma-informed approach. Providers must complete a detailed electronic health record review, understand the patient's surgical history, and communicate openly with the patients to perform a non-traumatic, diagnostically complete examination. Guidelines for screening are still a challenge. A lack of longitudinal research and epidemiologic data has created uncertainty surrounding other cancer screening in the transgender population. In general, if a transgender gender diverse patient has a body part or organ that meets criteria for screening, standard screening should be performed regardless of gender-affirming hormone therapy. For example, although imaging procedures are not the primary method of screening for cervical cancer or prostate cancer, radiologists should be aware that transgender gender-diverse patients are still at risk and screening recommendations follow the guidelines used for cisgender women and men with these organs. All right, on to you, Evelyn, for the next section. Great. And in our next section, we are at the radiology exam complete. And I'm going to be starting with another in our last vignette. So this is a 43-year-old transgender woman presenting to the emergency department with acute abdominal pain. She has been taking feminizing gender-affirming hormonal therapy for 13 years and underwent gender-affirming genital surgery five years ago. On um, viewing her abdominal and pelvic CT report, she notices that the radiologist reported that she underwent hysterectomy, which is anatomically inaccurate. So radiologic reporting provides another important opportunity for inclusive practice. Pitfalls for radiologists include limited understanding of gender transition-related changes, the absence of a lexicon to report such changes in an inclusive and affirmative manner, unknown individual patient history, and apparent sex and gender mismatches among the information in the EHR, PACS, and image anatomy. Radiologists must be sensitive to the patient experience and perception of their reports, as they are now immediately visible to patients under the 21st Century CARES Act. Special care should be taken when using dictation templates which incorporate the patient's sex and gender, as this can be a potential source for anatomic inaccuracy. Misgendering in radiology reports is not uncommon and in fact affects one in four trans and gender diverse patients. And it can result in errors in interpretation, patient distress, and mistrust in report accuracy. Radiologists must therefore take the time to ensure report accuracy. If there is any question, that the patient may be trans or gender diverse. Accurate anatomic terminology and descriptions of post-surgical changes are essential for all patients. And when possible, radiologists should also use affirming language when reporting on sensitive areas for our trans and gender diverse patients, such as the breast, chest, genitalia, and the reproductive system. It is also important to note that the preferred terminology is constantly evolving and there's no uniform agreement even amongst transgender people. For example, although gender reassignment surgery and gender confirmation surgery have been replaced 
um, by gender affirming surgery as the preferred terminology, some trans and gender diverse individuals still favor these older terms. Now, these terms are different from sex reassignment, which is universally outdated. Due to our lack of time, I'm not going to go through all the terminology in detail, but it is discussed further in our article. Lastly, Baz is going to discuss the radiology department inclusivity. Great. Thank you, Evelyn. All right. So radiology department inclusivity, super important. Any variation for dominant binary gender construct is associated with workplace discrimination and stigma. Despite increasing awareness of the challenges faced by transgender, gender diverse folks, there is still substantial opportunity to improve workplace inclusivity. This can start with physician and staff education. Insufficient knowledge of issues faced by transgender, gender diverse people is a barrier, the main barrier to an inclusive workplace culture. So education is key. Additionally, institutional policies, policies make a big difference. Including gender identity and institutional non-discrimination policies creates a welcoming, safe culture for transgender, gender diverse colleagues and protects their our rights. I refer you to our article for additional details on guidelines for creating an inclusive department and institution. Great. Thank you, Evelyn. Ending on that note, we are concluding our discussion of imaging care for transgender and gender diverse patients, best practices and recommendations. Thank you to my co-podcaster, Dr. Vaz Zavaleta for joining me. Um, and thank you to our wonderful co-authors from the University of Michigan for including us on their team to make this very important Greater Graphics article a reality. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.